I think we can all agree that LA is the entertainment capital of the world and represents beauty, glamour, movie stars, sunshine, perfection, and an anything goes chill vibe. Well, Los Angeles is one of the most ethnically diverse cities in the country and is the cultural hub of the Pacific Rim. In fact, Los Angeles is only one of two U.S. cities without a majority population. It has the highest concentration of Mexicans outside Mexico, Koreans outside Korea, and even Samoans outside Samoa. We have people from 140 countries speaking approximately 86 different languages, giving us neighborhoods like Chinatown, Koreatown, Little Tokyo, Boyle Heights, Little Ethiopia, East LA, to name a few. With these statistics, you'd think we'd have a variety of ethnically diverse images to inspire us and to look up to. I hate to keep bringing this up, but here's the deal. These are the images that represent Los Angeles. Perhaps with a little exploration, we can make new role models. Let's do a little detective work. My friend John Quill Cheney has lived in Los Angeles all her life, and I wanted to get her take on what Los Angeles is like and what she thinks of and what beauty is all about. So, John Quill, how do you see Los Angeles and the way it presents beauty? My kids, they love social media and um, Instagram and Facebook and all those things. Your daughter, Janae, is how old? She's 19 now. Yeah, she lives on Instagram. And I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm on Instagram. Is and she obsessed about it? Is she obsessed with her weight and how she looks? And A little bit. Yeah? Yeah. She can't help it. She flips through magazines all the time that has, you know, beautiful women, skinny women. And So do you think then that the pressure comes from it comes from outside sources. Society. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To be what? What do you think? To be what? To be thin, to be fair-skinned, um, to have straight hair. Hey, I want you to meet my friend Pat Talman. Pat has been an actress in Hollywood for a long time. She was in Babylon 5. She was in Night of the Living Dead. She's been a stunt woman, which I find really cool. So what's your experience been like just in terms of acting and how you look? just off the cuff. Well, it is it, it, it is all about how you look. And if you're a character actor, you can have quirkier looks. You can be heavier or you can have crazy hair. But if you are at all mainstream, then you need to be beautiful. You need to be gorgeous. What do you think the standard is? What in your opinion, what's the standard? It's it's um, good skin, big eyes, regular features, a pretty mouth or a voluptuous mouth good hair if possible, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of a symmetry. I want you to meet my friend Stephanie Novick. She's a comedy writer out in Los Angeles, here where we live. And I want to talk to you about beauty. Well, thank you for having me. My pleasure. Although beauty is, as you know, since we know each other, my least favorite subject. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Do you think you're beautiful? I don't. I don't. That's the short answer. I would say, I think I'm attractive. I know I'm attractive. Um, but I think beauty is a very specific thing. And I think I, I don't have the features that are culturally perceived as beautiful. And what, what is that? Well, it's the Michelle Pfeiffer, the Demi Moore. I mean, I don't actually know what the symmetry is, but it's something to do with how big your eyes are and how far apart they are spaced and the little nose and, and the high cheekbones. And I, I don't have those features. So has it, has it been something that has um, been a challenge throughout your life? Do you think about it a lot? Oh, you... how much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it, it has been a challenge. I think starting with, it's so funny, excuse me, <clears throat> starting with my childhood, where the Barbie doll ruined my life. It did? The Barbie she doll, did. the Barbie doll ruined my life. The Barbie doll was a impossibly skinny, busty, perfectly nosed, perfectly haired blonde, and I was a chubby, frizzy haired, prominent nosed, ethnic girl and I wanted to kill my Barbie doll when I was seven years old. I think what makes me uniquely me doesn't have anything to do with what's from the neck up. Well, let me amend that. 
doesn't have anything to do with what's visible from the neck up. It has to do with, with what's in here. And I think that part of why I became a comedy writer, part of why comedy is so uh, um, innate for me is because when you are not beautiful, you have to compensate. You, you better be funny or you better be brilliant or you're gonna be invisible. And that's basically, I think, what we do to women culturally. It's very, very difficult. Uh, it's very challenging to, to go through life when you're not gorgeous. Does it make you sad? Yes, it makes me sad. I'm on the verge of crying. I can tell. <laughs> what about yeah. it makes you sad? The sadness is that we place so much importance on physical beauty. And it just, it, it feels very unfortunate, again, to young people, because then we grow up feeling like, well, what are, what are our, how are we valued without the physical attractiveness? How can we change it? I honestly don't know what the fix is other than we consumers and we in the media have to stop promoting the notion that the only thing that's valuable is young, skinny, and pretty. Yes, LA is a place that encompasses Hollywood and glamour and a certain kind of beauty, but it's about so much more. It's time we began to see that it's our individuality that makes us beautiful. It's a big world out there. Do you think your mom's beautiful? Of course she is. Yeah, she <laughs> she's so beautiful, isn't I know. she?